So in this lecture, we talk about a zero inflated Poisson process or zero inflated Poisson models. So sometimes in the counts, we have excessive zeros. So the zero inflated Poisson model, this is used to model data which has too many zeros. Now, the standard example is that of an insurance company. So the number of claims on an insurance company by any one person holding the policy is almost always zero. So for a single person who holds the policy of the company, the probability of putting a claim is almost zero and that is precisely why the company makes money because not everyone who has the insurance is putting a claim on the company. So for such a model, you have excessive zeros. So we want to model this Poisson process which has this excessive zero. So it has zero inflated, so large number of zeros. So for such a model, there are two components. So there are two components of the zero inflated Poisson model. So the first component generates extra zeros. So uh, this uh, Poisson model will have two models within it. So model one, this generates extra zero. And for this model, we use standard odds ratio. So the odds ratio model or the logistic regression model is used right here to generate extra zeros. And the model two is the standard Poisson model. So the second component is the Poisson distribution. So Poisson distribution will also generate some zeros. So zeros are generated by both the models. So the model two will generate what zeros you will see in a Poisson distribution. But this model has extra zeros. So the extra zeros are generated by a different model, which is uh, essentially a odds ratio model. So we ju just set a probability for generating extra zeros here. So let us see this in an example, how this works. So say you have number of counts of claims on an insurance company. So, so this is individual one and this is our response variable and we have a bunch of predictors. So the individual one the sex one means male, zero means female. So zero is female, one is male. So in row one, for individual one, a male is filing a claim. So he has uh, filed one claim. There are four people in his household. So person means number of people in the household. So this is number of person in the household. Child is number of children in the household. And this 50.547 is his income. So this is 50,000. $547 and we have divided it by 1000 to scale it. So this is the income of the person and he has made one count. So you have this data. So in the second row, again you have a male who files for the claim. Now he has filed zero claims and the other predictors are he has uh, he lives in a four person household and he has one child. His income is 49.850 or $49,000. And the third person is a female, zero female. She has filed zero claims. She lives in a three person household, has one, one child, and the income is again $49,000. Or you can say $49,355. So what we want is a model. So the insurance company is interested in a model in which you feed in the predictors. You feed in three things, sex of the person who's going to file the claim, the number of people who live in the household, the number of children in the household, the income level of the household, and you want to predict how many claims this person will file. So how many claims is the output and the input is sex of the person, number of people in the household, number of person in the household, and then you have number of children this person has and the income level. 
So you put in four things in the model and the model spits out how many claims this person is going to make. So as I said before, this model has two parts. It has these extra zeros which are generated by a simple odds ratio and uh, the model 2 is our Poisson distribution. So let us model this in R. So first thing is you clear the memory. You require these two packages, require PSCL and you require boot to run uh, this zero inflated Poisson process. You feed in your data set. So this is the address. This is the name of the file. Your header is true. So I'm just displaying the first row of our data set. The so first row is person is a male. There are six people living in his household. The number of children in the household is zero. Income of this person is $102,000 or you can say $102,632 and count is eight. So he has filed eight claims. So count is number of claims, it's count of claims. So first thing is you have to modify the data because this sex is a factor, you know, it is male or female. So the sex is a factor and you know, there could be any number of persons, any number of children and income is a continuous variable. So you make a factor out of sex. Within the uh, data one, so this is the data one and uh, this you have a new data set now data two where sex is considered as a factor. Everything else is the same. Now you have the model, we call the model as M2. So this is zero inflated model, so zero INFL. So that is the model. So count is child, sex, income. So this count depends upon child, sex and income. And notice that I don't have, I have not put a plus. I have just put a person here. So this person is what is going to generate extra zeros. And the data is this data too. So once more, the model, this zero inflated model has two parts to it. It has a part one, which is the Poisson distribution. So Poisson distribution comes from this part. And then you say that extra zeros are caused by these number of person living in the household. Now for this model, we assume that obviously, you know, any person which holds a policy, his claim is almost always zero. So this is the number of people who are going to inflate the number of zeros. So you have to include this person which are in the household as uh, contributing to inflated zeros. So this is our logic uh, that that's why we are using this as inflated zeros. So once again, you have two models, you have a model on Poisson distribution for which you have three things. You have income, you have child and you have sex. And this count is the response variable. So the count comes right here. And then you want to generate extra zeros. So extra zeros is generated by this person right here. That is number of people in the household. And that is precisely because uh, of this logic here. You know, the number of claims from an insurance company by any person holding policy is almost always zero. So number of people generate extra zeros. So this number of persons are generating extra zeros. So this is extra zero. So notice the syntax. So this is a straight line here. And then you have this person. So this is the model. Now we run this model and see what the output is. So you take the exponential for the coefficients and the confidence interval because our model is uh, a log model. So you run this command, this is the output you get. So this is the coefficients and this is the confidence interval. So again, uh, in a standard regression, if zero is in the confidence interval, then that coefficient, the corresponding coefficient is not significant. Now here we are taking exponential. So exponential of zero is one. 
So in this case, if one is in the confidence interval, the coefficient is not significant. So let us uh, see this. So first focus on the intercept terms. So the intercept terms, you cannot do anything about. So just forget about these intercept terms. So let us start with this zero person. So notice that we say zero person because zeros are getting inflated from this person's model. So you look at the confidence interval, it goes from 0.59 to 0.89. There is no one in it. So this is significant. So now interpretation. So you got to interpret this as a odds ratio model. So interpret as odds ratio. So first thing is that notice that exponential of zero is one. So this is exponential of some negative number or this 0 0.72 is less than one. So less than one means it is going to have a negative impact. So you, uh, the impact is that if the person in the household increases by one, so person in the household increases by one, then since this is less than one, the number of claims made by this person, the claims drop. So claims decrease by a factor of 0.72. So claims decrease. So if you keep everything constant, if the number of people increase in the household, the claims decrease. Now look at this income. It goes from 1.01 .01 to 1.02. Again, it does not have one in the interval. So this is significant. So now this 1.01 .01 is greater than one. So one unit increase in income one unit increase in income. Now this 1.01 .01 is greater than one. So this will increase claims. So claims increase by a factor of 1.01. .01. Now this goes, uh, the count sex one, this goes from 1.57 to 2.33. Again, one is not in the interval. This is significant. So count sex one. So sex one means that it is compared to uh, sex zero. So you can easily see, see this is the zero inflation part. And this part is the, the count increase part. So uh, this is the Poisson model there. So now one unit increase in income increase the claim by 1.01. .01. So one unit is equal to $1,000 in our case because we have divided the income by $1,000. Now for sex, sex changes from zero to one. Then, then the claim increases by 1.9. So that means if a male files instead of a female and you keep everything constant, then the claim, they increase by a factor of 1.92. And then finally you have the child in the count model. So here this goes from 0.39 to 0.63. So it does not have one. This is significant. Again, 0.5 is less than one. So 0.5 is less than one. So things are going to decrease. So if the child increases by one, then the claims decrease because this coefficient is less than one by a factor of 0.5. So this is it. I mean, anyway, you can clearly see, you know, if you multiply your factor by 0.72, it is going to decrease. If you multiply it by greater than one, 1.01 .01 or 1.92, it is going to increase. So this is just multiplication, you know, multiply it by something higher than one, it is going to increase, multiply it by something lower than one, it is going to decrease. So this is the interpretation of the coefficients. And uh, the best way to go about this further is to use the predict command in R. Uh, and you keep changing the number of children, the sex, income level, and the number of persons in the household. And uh, that will continue giving you the number of claims filed. And that is a good way to go about it.